question, euh, juste lui dire que moi je, je l'ai connu dans les années 90 et que j'ai des frissons ce soir d'entendre euh, certains de ces textes que j'avais en disque et en cassette, quoi. c'était encore des cassettes, donc euh, ça me, je suis très émue de, 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 de l'écouter, de la voir aussi ici. Et en fait, la question que je voudrais lui poser, parce que moi, j'adore son... Enfin, je trouve qu'elle a un talent incroyable et surtout, elle était très avant-gardiste euh, par rapport à... musicalement, quoi. Autant musicalement qu'au niveau de, de sa manière de, de mettre en, en musique et en, en voix euh, les textes. Et je me dis comment euh, une artiste comme celle-là, euh, comme euh, Lillian Allen, n'a pas eu euh, le... comment dirais-je là... notoriété internationale qu'ont pu avoir certains artistes hommes euh, comme euh, Linton Quincy Johnson ou tout un tas de, de poètes comme ça ou euh, Mouta Baruka, tout ça qui ont eu une, une, une carrière internationale et comment se fait-il que je suis très heureuse de l'avoir ce soir mais à la fois je dirais que c'est pas à sa mesure quoi c'est euh, tellement euh, précaire par rapport à son talent et par rapport à la, à, je dirais à la, à la notoriété qu'elle devrait avoir aujourd'hui elle devrait être ailleurs, elle devrait être à la cigale et je me dis, euh, qu'est-ce qui a fait Est-ce que c'est la misogynie de l'industrie musicale euh, américaine, canadienne, qui, a, qui, a, qui ne lui a pas donné cette opportunité de carrière Est-ce qu'elle est venue à l'enseignement par dépit, justement, comme beaucoup d'artistes et beaucoup de musiciennes, en fait, euh, deviennent enseignantes parce qu'on ne leur donne pas la possibilité d'exercer leur art, en fait, et que le milieu musical est un milieu extrêmement machiste et, et, et même ségrégationniste, on peut dire. Donc voilà, c'est ces questions que je voudrais savoir. Et tu sais, bon pen so did you, her question was she said that she's been a fan of you for a very long time since the 80s and that yeah. it's, she's very moved she's got, to see you she's got goosebumps ah. hearing you and but at the same time she has this question where she she wonders why that you aren't more well like why you feel that you have, she feels like you haven't gotten the kind of fame and recognition that you deserve, especially considering the enormity of your talent, and that she feels that you should be at a bigger venue than, let me tell you. And she's wondering, in comparison with other, for example, the poets, like Vincent and Chrissy Johnson, she's wondering what what you think might be the reason why you might not have had been able to play, for example, at La Silla or some other bigger <laughs> than our humble well, bar. First of, first of all, I'll always come to places like these. It doesn't matter, you know, if, if yeah, if, how it breaks out. But uh, thanks, thanks for the, the compliment. Um, we had, I organized an international festival many years ago, 20 years ago. We had 92 poets, about 70 odd people call themselves dub poets. It was rancorous with conflict between the men and the women around various issues of feminism. Um, in terms of conscientization of the men, it was uh, very uh, difficult for them to uh, deal with women's sexuality, independent of theirs, etc. But one thing that came out over and over about the men who were there, all the women were on the phone all the time if they were from far away, talking about their children or the other women brought their children. And all the guys were just strolling around looking for girls. The women had to look after the children. There, nobody, there was nobody there who uh, provided support so they could jump out. That's one thing. Um, the other thing, uh, we know the entertainment industry, I use the word, is a bullpen. A bullpen. A male bullpen. Bull yeah, 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 it's a pen. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, um, it's one of those things. So it's not organized um, uh, for women in any way. And women who try to break through it have big negotiations to do because it's controlled in in, in that way. So, um, you know, my emergence happened, you know, for on a few few levels in the music scene in Canada. Canada is a bit more sort of uh, uh, liberal, I guess, than, than a lot of other scenes. And um, through the feminist movement. Um, when I wrote the poem, I talked about uh, that young girl, I have a poem called Nelly Belly Swelly. Ms. Magazine, 20 years ago, named my album a landmark album. 
for what it did, raising those issues when nobody wanted to talk about those issues. In my community, in the black community, a number of women asked to meet with me and they were not happy. They said, I'm washing dirty laundry in public. Right? So um, it's, it's kind of very complicated. Um, at one time, because I've gotten awards, critical awards in Canada, and we talked to a record company, and they say, um, we like what you're doing, but we want to be able to market you in a certain way. And um, I, I don't think I'm quite marketable. The devil kind of takes me over <laughs> when I'm before you know certain audiences and stuff. But I don't know. I'd love to make uh, some more money, tell you the truth. I'd love to cash in some more. And um, I'm hoping last uh, 10, 15 years, I focus on my daughter who um, needed me to focus on her. I raised her a single mother. And um, so I'd rather have a healthy, thriving daughter than a great career. So I had, as a woman, I had to make that choice. Some, you know, we don't, sometimes we don't have to, but a lot of women have to make those choices. So, in some ways, I had to make that choice. Um, yeah. And, I, and the rest is, you can imagine, whatever. <laughs> but thanks for asking. Okay.